Hello, 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 hello. What's cracking, my beautiful people out there on YouTube? It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat. BDG eat fantasy football. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ, the headquarters. It's Friday. Every Friday, we do a mock draft preparing you for your 2019 fantasy football season with the 2019 fantasy football mock draft. Shout out to YouTube for making me say this stuff to pick it up in the keywords and the SEO. This is not like the other mock drafts that you're going to see. Every Friday, I'm going to be doing this on the Draft app. We may or may not have a partnership in the works. I was over at the FanDuel office in New York yesterday. Got to meet some of the team. Great people over there um, working with the Draft app and in FanDuel. Really, really cool experience. But it's got some cool things in the works for y'all. If you don't know about the Draft app, this is a basically FanDuel's best ball app. If you've never done best ball, best ball is where you can draft your team and you don't have to worry about any in-season moves. So if you think you could take advantage of, you know, the rookie shifts or if you've been paying attention in the offseason, this is when you capitalize on gaining that knowledge, right? If you think you can grab a guy three rounds later than he should be going, th this is the time to do it. And there's no better app out there than draft. I am not pushing that because we have a partnership in the works. I'm pushing that because I truly believe it. And it's the reason I've been using this app for a long time. So the reason I say this is different is because I'm actually going to be picking with y'all. When I do the uh, the drafts on the draft app, which you could find at draft.com or just go into the app store and uh, find draft, whatever. Um, I'm going to be doing it with y'all. So what I do is basically you could do it on their app. You could do it on their desktop. I open up a league with my subscribers. So if you're not on the draft app, when you go on there, just find me. My username is Nick Ercolano and I create a league, which I will be doing right now. And the invite automatically sends out to all of my friends. First come, first serve. The first nine people that enter will be part of this mock draft. So let me go to my current drafts. And as you can see, I have like 92 drafts open right now because super easy to enter. As you can see, they're dollar entries. So the best part about having dollar entry drafts, and they're, you know, they have a lot of different options. You can do anywhere from a dollar up to like a thousand dollars if you're a high stakes kind of guy. You can do somewhere from um, three teams all the way up to twelve teams. So there's a lot of customizability. I don't know if I just made that work uh, that word up um, within the draft app to suit your needs, kind of. So what we're doing here today is a ten team half PPR mock draft for the 2019 football season. Oh, I see some some homies in here. We got Scott, my editor, at pick number three. Basically, the way that best ball works, as I was explaining, is that you draft a large team, and the software in the back end, the technological side of this shit, is that they start the best players each week, right? So you start one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, but you draft a team of 18 players, no kickers, no defense. So you have, you know, eight running backs or eight wide receivers. And we'll get into strategy and stuff as we go through the through the list. And it automatically starts the best players. So it does, you know, get a little different in the sense that maybe you want to take a boomer bust guy like a Deshaun Jackson might be more valuable in this league because you don't actually have to decide when to sit or start him. Um, but, you know, with these drafts, we're going to get into a lot of different player analysis and just kind of tell you what I think about these players. I have the number two pick, so I'll have the two and then I'll have the 19. Um, I'm a big fan of the two spot because as it's shaping up right now, I think things get a little bit messy once it gets past the first uh, the first four picks because I do want one of these top running backs. Now we have Zeke, Kamara, Christian McCaffrey at um, as those like top four elite running backs in my humble ass opinion. Um, I like Zeke, I like Kamara, I like McCaffrey. I do a ton of these drafts, so I diversify who I take in these top picks all the time. Like, I, If I have the number two pick in every single draft, I'm not going to keep hammering Zeke. Um, I love all these guys, to be honest with you, but I'm going to go with Kamara for now because I need to grab, I need to grab me some more Kamara action. <clears throat> um, I look at Kamara, and I expect a lot of the same that we saw from him out of the... 75% of the year in which Mark Ingram was there for. You know, obviously his numbers dipped. He had that ridiculous start to the season where he was touching the ball 25 times a game, scoring you 25 to 30 PPR fantasy points per game. Mark Ingram came back, and obviously they kind of split the load. And that will pretty much be the case again in 2019, given that Latavius Murray comes over, signs that uh, three- or four-year deal. I forget exactly what the contract... Um, what the contract was 
specified too. But Latavius Murray is absolutely going to be used on the ground game. He might be used on the goal line, but they also love using uh, Kamara on the goal line. So he's someone who's posted 80 receptions, back-to-back seasons, rookie sophomore year. I don't see any reason why this game plan should change whatsoever. So Kamara is, you know, a a very, very safe pick at the top of uh, the draft. I'm not worried about Latavius Murray because we've seen him do his thing with Mark Ingram involved. Um, And, you know, as you can see in the bottom left corner, we got my socials planted down there. It's my personal gram. We got the, the fantasy football side of things, the brand's Instagram down there, and then the Twitter. I would highly, 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 highly suggest... Not just to follow me on Twitter, but if you don't have a Twitter, make a Twitter because that's probably one of the absolute best platforms when it comes to you know getting fantasy football stuff because you have all the best analysts on there and they're constantly posting like the most valuable stuff. So head over to Twitter, go follow me at Nick underscore BDGE, and what you could do is just check out who I'm following. And for you know the most part, 95% of the guys I'm following are all very in tune with fantasy football or they're they're the better fantasy football analysts so you could just kind of follow the same guys that i'm following so after um after barkley kamara we had mccaffrey and then zeke right those are the top four guys those are the elite tier of running backs and then you have melvin gordon who you know you can absolutely argue that he's in that tier but he has the injury concern it makes you a little bit nervous after him man i it's like yeah i like d hop i like Devonte adams but it seems like these guys kind of all mesh into one tier like the uh, david johnson went at the one seven i'm definitely not going to be looking to take david johnson there um at the one seven it, it, it gets a little messy because you know uh you, you have to be drafting by tiers when you're drafting in your fantasy draft otherwise you're not going to be getting you know any sort of value so if you do have a selection of where you want to pick in a draft this year specifically I'm very much a fan of the uh, the top four picks. <clears throat> but we had David Johnson, Devontae Adams, Le'Veon Bell, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, Michael Thomas, Todd Gurley. So a couple things that I will point out here. Um, so when it comes to Le'Veon Bell, we just heard the news that Adam Gase, or the GM, was just fired yesterday, right? And Adam Gase is taking over as interim GM, and they want to get him more involved in, like, football operations. It's just fucking ridiculous. Like, how can you watch that, the press conference that they had with Adam Gase, where his eyes were fucking flying around like literal flies in the back of his head, and then be like, yeah, we want this guy to run our football team. Uh, Regardless, he came out, basically, or there was a report that came out and said that he wanted no part of um, Le'Veon Bell, or what Le'Veon Bell Um, was offering in terms of like the money and stuff that he wanted in New York. And that was a big disagreement between Gase and the GM apparently. And um, sorry, I'm just looking at the picks here. And that's, you know, that there's some, there's some turbulence already there. Le'Veon Bell has not came to the OTAs yet. And now he's like tweeting about it. He's like, I don't care if people like me or don't like me, I'm going to work hard. Regardless, there's going to be some awkwardness and some weird shit and weird tension going on in that locker room. Um, so it, it's a little, it's a little odd of a, of a setup there. So my pick is back on the clock, and I'll run through. I'm going to make these two picks while I'm kind of like focusing on the draft real quick. Mike Evans here at the 2-9, and I'm up again in two picks. Bobby GNF. I love that Abby, bro. Oh, I'm also on the clock in one of my rookie drafts. I have the 103. Nikhil Harry went 101. Um, Josh Jacobs went 102, so I'm pretty sure I'm about to take Miles Sanders with the 103. I need running back help. Okay, so he went Antonio Brown, George Kittle. Um, I'm going to go with Zach Ertz here, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. I know you might not agree with that. You might not want to take a, a you know Zach Ertz specifically or even Kittle up here at the top of the third round. But I've been doing more research on guys that study best ball, and um, you know as best ball is starting to get more and more popular, if you've never done it, like I really suggest you start trying these out. Uh, they're a lot of fun, and they get you prepped, and they, you know, they give you knowledge about where guys are really going in the draft. And the best part is, like I said, I joined all of these one dollar leagues, so 
you know, when you do it on ESPN or Yahoo, people start taking kickers in like the seventh or eighth round or everyone starts leaving really early in the draft. So you'll never get like a real idea of, you know, what guys are going where. But here, since even if you put something as low as a dollar on the line, like people's mindset completely shifts and they're going to be here for the entire like 18 rounds, right? So um, that's why I like doing the ones on draft. And um, as these are getting more popular, there are more people who are kind of like niching down and becoming like the experts, for lack of a better term, in the best ball arena, right? There are people who are good with season long, dynasty, redraft. Um, and there are people who are start, starting to study the numbers when it comes to best ball. And hopefully I can work with draft to kind of get some of the behind the scenes numbers and break down like win percentages in terms of roster construction. Um, but most of the numbers pointed to having an elite tight end on your team is like one of the, the highest advantages. And um in 12 team leagues, the highest percentage of like the highest win rate were from rosters constructed of teams that took a tight end within the first three rounds last year, uh, or the first four rounds last year, which were, if you're looking back at the ADPs, Zachers, Travis Kelsey, um, and, uh, George Kittle or not George Kittle, but one of the guys who finishes the top three or four tight end, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So this year, my, my strategy is that no matter what I want to leave the top three rounds with one of those elite tight ends. And uh, there was a really, really good write-up of articles. I believe it was on Rotoviz, where they dove into numbers really deep in terms of roster construction. Like they looked at teams that drafted a tight end in rounds one through three, and then not again till rounds like eleven through fifteen, and the win percentage of those teams, and then teams who went with quarterbacks in um, the first six rounds versus six through 11. It's, it's a really interesting thing. I'll, I'll link it down below if I can remember where I, where I read it and where I found it. But uh, my thing is like, I want to escape the first three rounds with the tight end because the position is so bare. There's a lot of guys on the cusp and this goes for season long too. There's a lot of guys on the cusp, like the OJ Howards um, and the Hunter Henry's and the David and Joku's who, you know, are in good situations. And on paper, in theory, they should break out this year, but I think they all kind of have their red flags, like Hunter Henry coming off the ACL. You have Mike Williams now there, who's a top 10 pick and is a you know a big goal line red zone threat coming off that 10 touchdown season. You have George Kittle, who's coming off the monster year. And I absolutely love George Kittle. I would take Kittle over Ertz here. Um, but, you know, Kittle is having uh, a lot more weapons added into the situation. He gets a new quarterback back. Do we see him get the same target share? Uh, O.J. Howard, you know, he, he's definitely an injury risk as well because he hasn't finished the season yet. He's ended both of the years on the IR since he's entered the NFL. We have, who else did I just name in? David Njoku who has not proven that he can block, so we don't know if he's going to be a three-down um, three tight end anytime soon. He's super sporadic in terms of his production last year. They bring in OBJ, who's obviously going to get 150 targets, and I think they're going to feed Nick Chubb because Nick Chubb was a guy who got, you know, 20-plus carries when he took over as a starter. So... I think there are a lot of guys who have a lot of upside, but there are also guys, uh, all those guys pretty much have question marks. So if I can come away with either Kittle, Ertz, or Kelsey at the top three rounds, even if I have to take Kelsey all the way up at in you know the beginning of the second round, I'm okay with that. Okay, so my pick in the four or five turn here, we saw Josh Jacobs go off the board. Good pick here. This is another like, you know, interesting situation here. Um, where it's kind of messy and there are a lot it's just like a landmine city which when we get to this point in the fourth fifth round when you have these landmines my preferred method is to go with these guys like stefan diggs and brandon cooks who i think are really you know really good players really safe players like both of them have really good floors right they're both going to hit 90 catches or you know Diggs will hit 90 and a thousand for sure cooks will hit 70 and a thousand um, but they both have potential to spike those numbers up to the 1200 Diggs as someone who can, um, you know, his touchdown potential is through the roof. So Diggs is a guy who can hit 12 to 15 touchdowns in any given season if things break right. So I like going with these guys as opposed to landmine running backs. Um, like for instance, a Mark Ingram, who I have absolutely no interest in, in anywhere near the fourth round. He's like a seventh round pick for me. Geis is a guy who, um, I'm going to go with Brandon Cooks here just to kind of get through this pick for them. So uh, Geis is a guy who I absolutely love as a talent, but you know, they get Chris Thompson back. They drafted Bryce Love, who I think is more of a future pick. I get it, but it's just kind of speaking to more of the situation. And I had Dr. Jesse Morse on the channel a couple of weeks ago talking about running back injuries, and he's nervous for Darius Geis, right? The ACL has a nine to 12 month recovery time. Um, 
and then you add in the fact that he had complications with it. So that probably adds another two to three months on the timeline. And I know he's, he's cutting and sprinting and whatever, and he's supposedly going to be ready for OTAs. Um, but to be back for full strength, it, it's the, the timeline is, is there for a reason. Um, and they could very much, you know, slow his role into the season. And for season long and for best ball, you don't want a guy who is performing at his floor for, you know, four, six, eight weeks. I'm not saying that's the case. That might not be the case for guys, but like the scientific evidence, right? Like, what do I know? I'm just a doctor here says that the recovery timeline is not going to be until, you know, mid-September, you know, late September. So I think the fact that they re-signed Peterson, they get Thompson back, they added depth through the draft tells you that maybe guys won't be ready. So guys, you know, it, it's just a, all, all of these landmines here. Derrick Henry just doesn't catch passes. Philip Lindsay's also injured, doesn't really catch passes either. Royce Freeman, new coaching staff, all of these red flags. And I would just rather go with, especially when a digs falls to you in the late fourth, um, Brandon Cook's early fifth. I, I, I love those guys as, as staples because... They also offer a lot of boom bust, and that's what you look for in these best ball drafts, right? You don't have to decide who to start. So in the weeks that Brandon Cooks goes, you know, five for 50, you don't have to start him. But in the weeks that he goes, you know, like, for instance, that has his game logs here, eight for 120, you know, he'll probably be the best performer on your team. So he automatically gets into your starting lineup. Diggs has that monster potential to go for multiple touchdowns in a game as well. So when you are constructing your team, you know, obviously look at, the number of players you're drafting at each position. So for instance, like I said, right, you draft 18 players. So you're going to have a lot of certain positions. And um, uh, a couple of those articles that I was just mentioning in terms of uh, best ball roster construction, talk about, you know, teams that went with two quarterbacks or teams that went with two tight ends and what their win percentage is. And a lot of the times it came away with the fact that uh, teams who took two quarterbacks, two tight ends, but, but it was, um, one of the tight ends had to be within the first three rounds and one of the quarterbacks had to be within round six through 11. So you kind of have to go early on both of those positions, but those are the highest win rates. So that's what I've kind of been sticking to in my drafts at this point, get an elite tight end then don't take another one like a Dallas Goddard later in the draft. And then I take a quarterback in round six through 10, usually to get one of the, like the elite quarterbacks, like Andrew Luck still on the board in the seventh round is someone I would target. Same thing with Deshaun Watson. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's a lot of the same strategy as season long where you're not going to jump up for a quarterback. Um, you're not going to pay up for like a mid-tier tight end or anything like that. So a lot of the rookie running backs, I, I think, are great values in these drafts because people haven't really hyped up their ADPs enough. Like I think Josh Jacobs going in the 4-8 is crazy because by the time real drafts start, he'll probably be going in like the third, fourth round. And I'm up on the clock here. Whoops. Sorry, I haven't been really paying attention. Uh, shite. Uh, I'm going to go with Latavius Murray here. I probably wouldn't normally take him this early, but Latavius Murray is another great option for a league like this because, again, you don't have to pick when to start him, and he's obviously, he fills in that Mark Ingram role. So Latavius Murray has easily double-digit rushing touchdown upside. It wouldn't surprise anyone if he finished this year with 10 touchdowns in New Orleans, right, running behind that line. Plus, he has a lot more breakaway speed than Mark Ingram, and when you're running in an offense that has you know, those type of holes, right? Their elite offensive line. Mark Ingram is not going to give you those 50-yard runs, but a guy like Latavius who runs, you know, a 4 4 can break away. And he might surprise people with actually really, really crazy numbers this year. Um, so that wouldn't surprise me. So I, I really like Latavius Murray in a best ball draft like this. Um, and then at the 7, like I said, I try to target a quarterback within rounds 6 through 10. And uh, preferably, I like, you know, if, if these elite guys, right? I have a tier of the top running backs which goes Mahomes, Luck, Watson, Rodgers. Those four are the top four tiers. And then it's pretty much a, uh, a, a monster tier between Baker and Russ and Matt Ryan and, and, and all those people. Um, so I don't like to let all these guys fall. And I have a feeling since it's like the seventh, eighth round and I don't pick again until, you know, eight, nine or whatever. And that's another thing you obviously have to do is when you're drafting in your season long drafts, look ahead and see, you know, in terms of tiers, right? Because you always want to draft by tiers again. It goes by value where you want to be drafting guys um, because there's a, a good chance that these guys don't drop to me and then the tier just makes it not worth it to take a quarterback, you know, in the in the eighth round or whatever. So um, I think that's a great strategy and I uh, just want to plug this in here. If you are interested in getting my rankings, right? If you think any of this stuff is like super in-depth, um, I try to be as in-depth as I can and give you as much as much value as I possibly can throughout these videos. Um, but I can't get everything in here. I put out a lot of content throughout the summer. So 
I created the Big Dogs Gotta Eat draft guide. And the draft guide literally just takes the best content that I put out all season and puts it into this draft guide. It has my top 250 big board for season long and for dynasty. It has all of my positional rankings by tiers, right? I talk about tiers all the time. The tiers will be in that draft guide. It's updated throughout the entire summer. So it's not like those outdated ass magazines where they put them in July and then everything is irrelevant by the time your draft comes. Update throughout the summer. So it's got my ranking. It's got my top busts all in depth with like in-depth analysis as to why they're my busts, sleepers, must draft players, uh, my top resources in terms of like websites and, and to find stats and analysis and injuries and like all it's literally everything you need for your 2019 fantasy football season is in this draft guide. And it is on sale right now. Um, it, it doesn't go up yet. Like the content won't be up until July 1st, but you can pre-order it before June 1st for 20% off the launch price if you cop before June 1st. So go check that out at bigdogsdraftguide.com. I promise you, if you purchase this, like you, you will not have to look elsewhere for preparing for your fantasy draft and you probably will never purchase another draft guide again outside of the big dogs. Um, so there we go. See all the, uh, all the quarterbacks are going off the board. We had luck and now Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers just both went off. So now like if I were to pick a quarterback, like, is there really a point in me picking a Matt Ryan in round eight when I can probably get Carson Wentz all the way down here? who's a ridiculous value like in the 11th or 12th? Probably not, right? And that's why tiers are are needed really here. Um, also, in terms of drafting with me, if you do sign up for draft, I would, I, I mean, if, if you're watching this on your computer, oh, Jesus, go sign up on, um, go sign up on your, uh, on your laptop. If you're watching on the, this, I just said that's so ridiculously. I'm not paying attention. I'm sorry. If you're watching on your computer, go sign up on your phone on the app. If you're watching on your phone, go sign up on the computer um draft.com slash bdge if you use the promo code bdge when you sign up you will get three dollars to draft with right i would suggest throwing ten dollars in your account because you throw ten dollars in your account and boom you could do ten one dollar drafts right that's good you're good for like the next two months and that will prep you all the way up until your draft you'll actually know where guys are going you'll see all the adps shift and things like that so um that's uh, that's what I got for you. So draft.com slash BDGE. Use the promo code BDGE. Get $3 to draft with. And then go add me at Nick Urkelano. You can see my uh, my username up here. Um, go friend me. And then every time I start a draft with my... Every time I start a draft just like this, you'll automatically get an invite to it. And it is first come, first serve. So make sure you keep those notifications on as well. So if we're looking at my team right now, we have Andrew Luck, Kamara, Latavius Murray, Mike Evans, Stephon Diggs, Brandon Cook, Zach Ertz. That's a really, really start, uh, solid starting lineup. So the way I would do this, the way I would start constructing this again is, you know, once you get to the bench, I think you start looking at, you know, do I want to have seven running backs or do I want to have eight wide receivers? Do I want to have three tight ends? It really goes to... Um, how you've been constructing your roster, right? If you're using a lot of high draft capital on running backs, like your first three picks are running backs, then you probably want to have more depth at wide receiver because you're going to need more, you know, shots like that. Um, I like Allen Robinson here. I like Will Fuller here. Both of these guys are good plays in best ball, where again, you don't have to pick who is going to be in your starting lineup. Uh, I'll go with Allen Robinson. He is a little bit of an injury risk, but I think he's probably a little bit less than Will Fuller. And I'll probably be able to grab Fuller at the nine and I know I only have two running backs so I probably should be investing in running backs but uh I don't see a lot of value here there's not a lot of guys that I want to you know ah damn so Will Fuller just went off not a lot of guys I want to bang the table for right now um and none of these top guys really scream that they are a value uh especially not in like best ball so I, I think the value of like an Al Robinson or a Will Fuller even the Marvin Jones I like Christian Kirk I like a lot um Okay, so there goes Christian Kirk off the board. I kind of like McCole Hardman here too. Didn't realize he was all the way down here. I'm telling you, there's a lot of guys that you could really take advantage of. So it's a good way to win money, man. You don't set your lineups. You come back in, in January and the money is back in your account. And then you could play 2020 best ball drafts with that. and Or just cash out, whatever you want to do. Um, oh, man, it's about to be my pick, huh? I'm going to go with uh, Marvin Jones here. Marvin Jones is quietly on pace for like a thousand yards and eight or nine touchdowns again last year before he got injured. So uh, I'm a fan of Marvin Jones as like a low key bounce back candidate. 
And uh, he's always been Matt Stafford's favorite goal line red zone target. That was even the case when Kenny Galladay was a starter last year. He got way more looks down in the red zone. Um, and I'll actually be breaking down Marvin Jones pretty in depth on Tuesday's video, which will be my top post type sleepers and bounce back players. So we got like a list of five or six guys. So stay tuned for that. Um, that'll be a good one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll know when I post that. Uh, the subscribe button is right underneath the video if you have not already. And while you're down there, hit that thumbs up button. Um, leave a comment just for SEO purposes on YouTube. Why not? And as I was saying, yeah, so right now I have five wide receivers already, right? So that kind of dictates to me that I'm probably going to have to start going for more uh, running back depth here. Um, I think I have a lot of really solid wide receivers on the team, especially for best ball stuff. But I think, I, I don't know, I think they're good picks as well for regular drafts. Um, the... Um, the app, I mean, dude, there's not a cleaner interface or like a more aesthetic app in terms of drafting than, than what draft offers. Um, I actually prefer the app to the desktop version, but obviously I can't screen record my phone. I could, I guess, but it'd be a fucking ridiculous video on YouTube to do it that way. Um, but it's... And this is not clunky whatsoever. The only thing is, like, sometimes it slows down. It's probably because I'm running running a lot of software, like a screen record software, and I have other apps open and stuff. But I'm trying to see my team, and it won't really load unless I'm doing something wrong. Usually you could click on your team on the top here. And, uh, and you'll be able to see the players. Oh, maybe I was just doing that wrong. Maybe you got to click them down there on the bottom right. Um... So as you can see, I have five wide receivers. It's easier to see in the app because it actually breaks it up by position. So rather than like who you drafted and, you know, in the starting lineup or whatever. So it's a little confusing here to see your depth, but I only have two running backs compared to Evans, Diggs, Cooks, Robinson, Jones at wide receiver. So my next few picks will probably be running back unless I see some value fall at like tight end or something. And I want to shirt my second tight end spot, but probably not. I don't have anyone on that list that I really like we're starting to see all the tight ends kind of drop off now we saw Hawkinson go McDonald and Joku um, and I just grabbed Hawkinson in my oh that I just missed my pick damn no I didn't I just grabbed Hawkinson in my dynasty uh, startup draft which I'm fucking super pumped about he fell to me at like the 611 but I do like a guy like uh, Vance McDonald I probably like David and Joku better than TJ Hawkinson just for 2019 I'm sure after that I'll probably like uh, Hawkinson better than both those guys in redraft. Um, but for now, I'd probably stick with those guys at tight end. But this is probably about the time you'll see them start going in redraft. Because um, Scott loves rookies, man. All he does is fucking draft rookies. It's kind of funny. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Running backs. Jordan Howard, nah. Jerry McKinnon. I like Darrell Henderson a lot because I have no faith in Todd Gurley's knee holding up. I like Jalen Samuels as a possible big-time pass catcher in Pittsburgh. I like Edo Smith. People are sleeping on I like Peyton Barber, too. I can't believe he's going this late. So I'm going to go with Darrell Henderson and hope for a Todd Gurley injury. And I'll see if maybe... Uh, I like Peyton Barber, man. I really, really, really do. Um, Peyton Barber is a winner of the NFL draft. They did not draft a running back. So they literally have Ronald Jones, who got 23, 28 carries last year. And they have a oh, good pick by Scott, another rookie. But um, rookies just don't do much in their first year. So the production is not going to be there for most of the guys that, you know, most of the rookies that are being picked. But um, Peyton Barber is a guy who he came out of the NFL draft as a big winner. And if you missed this week's earlier video on Tuesday, I broke down all the NFL draft winners and losers position by position. So I will link that at the end of this uh, video on the end screen. I'll put that video, but it'll also be linked down below and on my channel. So go check that out. Peyton Barber was a big winner because they only have the two running backs on the roster. And I know a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people are really sold on this kid, Bruce Anderson, who was an undrafted free agent. He is under 200 pounds. He didn't run a great 40 yard dash time. He didn't catch balls in college. So like, I don't know what all the hype was about, um, but I'm not really worried about him taking Peyton Barber's role. 
uh, yeah, Peyton Barber was quietly good last year. He had the ninth most carries in the entire NFL. He was top 10 in um, uh, missed tackles forced per attempt. So in efficiency, by, by efficiency metrics, he was actually way better than a lot of people gave him credit for. He did not catch passes, which obviously is a big downside. Um, but they just didn't do that in their offense last year. That's, that's Dirk Cutter's offense. That's how that offense runs. And now he's in Atlanta, which is another red flag for me in terms of uh Devonta Freeman and people are like everyone's fucking yells at me all day about not wanting Devonta Freeman in third fourth round huge injury risk wouldn't be surprised if Edo Smith and Quadri Olsen both challenged him for work I, I think Devonta Freeman's gonna end up if he doesn't get hurt um if he doesn't get hurt I'm pretty sure Devonta Freeman is gonna end up as like a two down grinder that people are gonna take in the third fourth round he doesn't catch he, his receiving workload has gone down every single year since his breakout in 2015 and now you have Dirk Cutter coming over who doesn't throw to the running backs. They don't use the running backs. They pass the ball deep down the field all the time. Edo Smith is a 90th percentile college target chair guy. And Devonta Freeman is just too small to run the way that he runs and have him be able to play all 16 games um, consistently. That's why he's dealt with so many injuries. He's had PCL. A lot of people are like, you know, he's not any more of an injury. I had someone comment that he's not any more of an injury risk than Marlon Mack, but Marlon Mack has dealt with like a hamstring injury. Those are things that you just need to let rest. Devonta Freeman has so many concussions. One, he's like one concussion away from being out of the NFL. PCL, MCL injuries, those things linger on. Like his PCL might still affect him into 2019. There are so many red flags with Freeman that if you're thinking about taking him in the third round, I, 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 I please don't do that, guys. Please don't take him that early. Um, so I like Edo Smith here too, just because I think he's going to get some work. But I forget like what fucking even started me on that tangent, to be honest. Um, so now I have four running backs, four wide receivers. I'll probably start to look more just at overall um depth you know what i like taking one of those elite quarterbacks and i also like using a later round pick like like cam newton here i know cam newton definitely has his injury concerns too but i like the fact that he is let me see if this guy okay so this is also how you plan for this so he hasn't taken a quarterback yet there's a good chance that he takes a quarterback on one of these two picks so i was going to take a running back or a wide receiver here with the 12 9 and hope that he doesn't take Cam, and then take Cam at 13, but looking at his team, there you go, see, he goes with a quarterback, and that might have been, okay, see, one of those might have been Cam Newton, so I might not have been able to get him, but the fact that I have Luck as a sturdy, reliable starter, and then Cam Newton there, just in case he has his, you know, 40-point weeks, that'll be monstrous for my team, so we're looking at other running backs who have, you know, upside, I like Justice Hill, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna reach for Justice Hill when we have guys like Edo Smith, Naeem Hines, and even Deion Lewis, I think, is being very, very thoroughly slept on because he's still going to be the pass catcher there in that backfield. And he quietly came away with, you know, let's look at some numbers here. Let's break down some numbers. And also, I'm going to make my rookie 103 pick because everyone's probably yelling at me already. Flea Flicker. Deion Lewis, FF Today. If you ever want to look at stats of a player, just type their name in and then type FF Today. And the first thing will bring up, like, their player page on FF Today. So he caught 59 passes last year. That was that's normally like top five numbers among running backs. But since you know last year was such an outlier year and running backs caught so many passes, no one looks at that. And I still think like you see him all the way down until the last game, right? Seven, two, five, three, 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 or was his involvement in the passing game? Um, so it doesn't tell you that like even when Derrick Henry was getting his running workload, that hit that Deion Lewis's passing workload suffered in that sense, right? It, that that didn't happen. So. Um, I think Deion Lewis is still a sneaky bet to finish with 50 to 55 receptions again this year. So it should be, uh, I think he's a good best ball pick um, later later in drafts. I know the touchdown numbers aren't there, but that's something that I think could fluctuate and maybe, you know, he could end up with five, five or six touchdowns along with 50, 50 something catches, right? So I like Lewis. Um, okay, so we have these two dynasty leagues. Also, if you guys are interested in joining dynasty leagues, we have partnered up with Flea Flicker as well as Team Stake to offer you guys um, paid dynasty leagues. And there are about 10 open right now. Let me see. This one's almost filled. Yeah, there's two more spots left on this one. I think I'm going to actually take one of those spots. So if you want to join one of them you with me, you can get in on that one. But you have to be a, a member of Patreon. So patreon.com slash BDGE to find out more info. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different options. There's one quarterback leagues and there's super flex leagues. And then there are buy-in prices of 35, 74, and 174. So you could choose between, you know, whatever settings you want. And uh, and you could start up a dynasty draft. So dynasty are, are very fun. They're fucking wild. I'm in the middle of a startup right now. And 
you wouldn't even believe the shit that's happening in that startup if, if I tried to tell you about it. And I, I did try my best because here's literally the YouTube version of, of me trying my best to tell you what's going on. Um, where are we at? This draft is going quickly. I like it. I like it. These, uh, these mock drafts are hard for me to film in because I just fucking spew out knowledge and big facts for like an hour straight. I don't even know. It's almost like a blackout. Like I do them and I just talk for an hour straight and then I'm done. I'm like, holy shit, what just happened? But I get the goddamn thing done. That's why I'm the best. That's why I'm the GOAT. I'm kidding. But not really. Um, if you are enjoying, if you feel like you're finding some value, some, some big facts from this, I'm helping you out in any way. Uh, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button down below. And I really suggest you go cop the draft guide at bigdogsdraftguide.com. But I'm on the clock in my rookie draft at the 103. And again, I need a running back really badly. So uh, it's not close, obviously, for me between who's going to go there. Uh, it's between David Montgomery and it's between Miles Sanders. And I am a fan of Sanders. So I'm going to take Sanders and he is going to probably insert right into my starting lineup. Let me let them know before they get all antsy and shit. Oh, shit, I'm up on the clock, too. That's a problem. Um, any wide receivers I love? No. Where's, where are, oh, shit, where'd you go? No. Fuck. I missed my pick. No, they took a third quarterback for me. Goddamn, goddamn, goddamn. Don't miss your picks. Don't be like me. Don't let it auto-draft. Shit, I want a Justice Hill there. Um, but, point being, I like to, actually, there's a lot of wide receivers I still like, but I went so heavy on wide receiver in the beginning of the draft that I don't really want to go with, too many wide receivers here. So looking back, a good strategy seems to be, you know, loading up running backs early. So I went with Kamara early and I could have went with another, you know, Nick Chubb in the second round and then Mar Marlon Mack in the third round and then stocked up on these later round high upside wide receivers like Gallup, Miller, uh, Deshaun Hamilton, things like that. So, um, you know, as we get closer to the season, I'm going to be able to tell you more and more like what the early round best strategies are in terms of, you know, where your picks are. Scott, what else is fucking new? Going with another Rook. Love that. You know this isn't a, a, a Dynasty draft, Scott, right? I think you're just in full-on Dynasty mode right now. Oh, nope. God, the Fade the Public Dynasty League is just so out of control. We've had like 92 trades. I'm probably almost up on the clock in that one too. Ah, fuck, I keep clicking the wrong one. Let's see, um, next on the clock. I'll show you guys my roster while we're here, while we're having a good old time. Let me probably like miss my pick again. Nope. Um, so this is a dynasty startup and this is a super flex. So I get so many comments like when I post my team. Oh, I'm actually on the clock. We went with Nick Foles. Interesting. Um, I'm probably going to have to grab. <clears throat> you know, we'll talk through it actually. We'll talk through it after we're done with the best ball. So you get a twofer. You get to talk about my dynasty pick right now at the end. Some strategy, some analysis. And you also get to... Um, I got to put this chat on Do Not Disturb because you guys can't be seeing that. Okay, so we have a lot of quarterbacks starting to run. Yeah, see, like, I don't want my team to be filled with these Mitchell Trubisky, Kirk Cousins guys. Like, yeah, you know what? Maybe they'll be good, but quarterbacks score a lot of points. So I want the best quarterback out there to give me a weekly advantage there. Um, ah, there goes Goddard. I probably should have planned to grab him around earlier, too. So... We're getting to the end of the drafts, and I have to obviously have to grab my tight end too. And if you didn't grab a guy like uh, Ertz, who I grabbed earlier, you know, in the draft, then you're probably going to have to grab three tight ends, right? Because you're probably going to end up with a guy like Njoku, but Njoku is far from a weekly consistent producer. So you'll grab a Njoku, you'll grab probably, I don't know, Mark Andrews, Jack Doyle, or Ian Thomas, or something like that. So with these, I like the uh, the younger, higher upside guys. So I would take Ian Thomas over Greg Olson. I don't trust his foot whatsoever. And Ian Thomas performed really well while Greg Olson was out. Um, I like Mark Andrews a lot. He quietly had a really, really good rookie season that no one's talking about. And Lamar Jackson 
It was horrible passing, but the one guy that he consistently targeted was Mark Andrews in that offense. So he was one of my favorite late round tight ends. He has a great athletic profile as well. Um, so we have six running backs. We have five wide receivers. I definitely want to stock up a few more of those. I will probably go with one more tight end and then use the rest on these skill flex positions. I like Debo Samuel to come in and probably catch 60, 60 passes, but I, I but I like Deshaun Hamilton a lot to catch uh, to catch probably, I don't know, like 70, 70 to 75 passes. Kind of a bold prediction there, but um, I, I could totally see it happening. The rest of these guys don't really have too much upside. They either have way too much risk or not enough upside for me to me to really like. I kind of like... Darwin Thompson. I kind of like Raquel Armstead. So there are a couple rookies just because Raquel is like the direct backup to Leonard Fournette, who's almost like guaranteed to get hurt. Um, let me minimize this for you guys. So he'll have some good games if he uh, if he plays, but I probably don't have to draft him until the last round, I'm guessing. I'm going to take Deshaun here. Um... The other thing, okay, so Scott, of course, went with another rookie. Good job, Scott. You're absolutely providing valuable content <laughs> content to me right now. So he went with Hollywood Brown. The other thing with best ball, especially when you're drafting this early in best ball, is I'm staying completely away from guys that are risks, risks going into the year in terms of suspensions or injuries. So Hollywood Brown is coming off the Liz Frank injury. We have absolutely no idea when he's going to be back, if he's going to be back within the first two games, four games, eight games. Is he on the pup list? Same things with guys like Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill. Um, so, like, I don't know when Tyreek Hill went off the board. Let me see if I can find it. It's probably going to take me, like, eight hours. Probably went somewhere in, like, the 10th or 11th round. And I guess at that point, I could probably go for it. But there's a good chance that Tyreek Hill is, like, Adrian Peterson, ends up on the commissioner's exempt list and just not play whatsoever this year. So I don't want to use a roster spot on that because um, that's going to hurt your team a lot. You're playing with 17 when people are playing with 18. Same thing with, like, Kareem Hunt. Uh, he's going to be out for eight games, so you're getting no production out of one of your RBs. Plus, we have no idea what his role is going to be when he is a bike. Kind of like Dante Moncrief here, too, um, to take over that wide receiver two role in Pittsburgh. And if that's the case, he's going to put up some big numbers. So I'll go with Moncrief here, and then... Oh, shit, I only have one more pick. Damn, I didn't realize that. Because I went with three quarterbacks, and I almost never go with three quarterbacks. Shoot! So I'm going to have to use it on a tight end, unfortunately. Uh, although I wanted to go with Justice Hill in the last round. I think Justice Hill's a great last round pick. And that's the reason I don't like Mark Ingram. To me, like, wh why, what says that Mark Ingram is not just going to be this year's Alex Collins? I know they run the ball. Everyone's always like, oh, the Ravens run the ball at the highest rate in the NFL. Like, yeah, obviously, because their fucking quarterback took 20 rushes a game. Um, so that leaves, like, not that many rushes for their running backs. I mean, I know Gus Edwards had a lot of rushes, but, like, Mark Ingram's really not going to catch a lot of passes. Who knows if he's going to get that much work on the goal line. Justice Hill is an explosive athlete, a playmaker. I think he fits what this style of offense you could see is kind of going more towards in terms of drafting Miles Boykin, drafting Hollywood Brown, drafting Justice Hill, all guys who are extremely good speed score athletes. Um, and I think that's where it's going. And I'm not sure how we see Mark Ingram fit. It's almost like it's almost like Jordan Howard's fit in Chicago last year. Um, but I think Jordan Howard is a better runner at this point. Um, worst pass catcher, but I don't think they're going to ask Mark Ingram to catch passes because they always use that running back by committee, right? Last year we saw it with Alex Collins. Um, Suck Allen, uh, Ty Montgomery at one point. It's just like, it, it's just a nightmare. And Mark Ingram is not anyone that I want on my team. So with the last pick, um, you know, I haven't taken any Jack Doyle. I love Jack Doyle going into last year. And I see a lot of people, you know, like, oh, well, when Jack Doyle was healthy, he was the one who was getting all the snaps. And, and that was something I said last year. But if you're still, you know, talking about that going into this year, I think you're looking at it wrong because he's just been so injury prone that by this point, the Colts aren't going to be game planning Jack Doyle to get... They can't have a game plan where they're relying on Jack Doyle because he's just never on the field. So there's no way that Jack Doyle is going to earn more snaps than Eric Ebron after what we saw at Ebron last year. So Jack Doyle is a guy I went really, really far back on. But we did just hear the news that Eric Ebron um, went in for groin surgery. And it's not supposed to be serious, but like that's never a good thing right now in the offseason, right? So it's possible that Jack Doyle... It's possible that it's more serious than we predicted. Um, something to keep an eye on, and Jack Doyle might have a little bit more value than I originally anticipated. So kind of like Jack Doyle, even though he just went off the board. Tyler Eifert. Tyler Eifert's a guy that I would only take in best ball right now if, could, obviously, his risk is so high. I would only take him if he is my third tight end. I don't normally take three tight ends, but if I do, he would be my third. Um, 
the reason you have to take a second in all these positions, of course, too, is because there's bye weeks, one, so you're missing out on a free, you know, 10 points. If you don't have a second guy when that starting guy is a bye week, and of course, injuries happen. So if your tight end gets injured or if your quarterback gets injured, you don't have a second guy on the roster, that's a ma- you're basically just taking the L on, in that league. So you have to at least have one backup at each position. Um, it's up to you whether you want to go two and two or three and two or three and three. But I like to have the skill players locked up um, as, as a more high volume depth on my roster. So I like Ian Thomas um, and I like Irv Smith a lot. And now I kind of like Van Watson now that he went to the Patriots. Someone you can get in the last round. Although think about like people like to make the argument like, oh, it's a Patriots tight end. But like every single time that's happened outside of Gronk it never works like no tight end has actually put up good numbers outside of Aaron Hernandez but he was like a whole different position he was basically like a wide receiver or a flanker um everyone's like every you know since if Gronk is out now you people want to like throw these the New England tight end their lineup and they just never produce so I'm definitely not like excited about that I kind of like Irv Smith here too because I have a feeling that they're going to move Kyle Rudolph before the season and Irv Smith is a guy who just like Jordan Reed undersized but great athleticism and could be a playmaker down the seam. And we saw, you know, Kirk Cousins is the quarterback in Minnesota. He was also the, the quarterback in Washington when Jordan Reed had those breakout years. So if so, facto, I like Irv Smith in the 18th round of best balls because I think he could put up a, a quiet 60 for, you know, 600 to 700. Probably not a lot of touchdowns, but um, if Kyle Rudolph gets moved, you know, I ain't too mad about that. I think they'll have a role for him either way because they don't have uh, a third wide receiver even. They don't have a, a third weapon. They're like, oh, Laqu- Laquan Treadwell and Diggs and, and Dillon are the only things they have on the outside. So um, even if even if er, uh, Kyle Rudolph is still in the lineup, I, I would imagine Irv Smith gets a lot of playing time just as, as a weapon, as a pass catcher in that offense. And the fact that, like, you know, I, I do think they're going to go very run heavy, but they invested a lot of money. In, think about the three guys they have, Diggs, Dillon, Kirk, all fat extensions and all getting paid Big, big, big money. So it's not like they're going to completely just shift away from the pass game. So there goes my lineup. I am, I am Zun. Um, and the prize pool pays out first, second, and third. And you could also do slow drafts and fast drafts on Draft.com. Uh, again, if you want to get a three dollars to Draft.com, go use my promo code BDGE. You'll get three dollars to draft with. Um, and then collect your money at the end of the year once you're done. So you can do a slow draft or a fast draft. And the fast draft is what you just saw me do, which is 30 seconds per pick. But a slow draft is eight hours per pick. So if you want to join like five slow drafts at a time, which is like five bucks, um, then you can, you know, you'll have your different picks throughout the day. And you don't have to be on the app. And like if you're at work or something, slow drafts are perfect because you don't have to be like in the zone and you have eight hours to make your pick and you can do some some research and whatnot. So they have both of those different draft types open, um, which is great for you guys. Now let's go to my Dynasty League. So I'm on the clock right now, and I'll, I'll break down my team again. And again, this is super flex, and I get so many damn comments. Like, they'll see Russell Wilson was picked in the second or third round, and they'll be like, what a bad pick. Like, if you look at our draft board right now, um, you'll see everyone in red is a quarterback, right? So you see Pat Mahomes, Rodgers, Luck, Baker, all those guys drafted within the first three rounds. And I posted this on Instagram. And again, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's right there, Big Dogs Fantasy. And people are like, what the, you know, what the fuck is Andrew Luck doing in the second round? You know, Carson Wentz in the third round. And I'm like, y'all, super flex. So if you've never played in the super flex league, stop commenting on super flex drafts, homies. You start two quarterbacks. So they are way more valuable and they use up quick. There's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the league, right? 12 teams. So that means automatically 24 starters are off the board. So you need three starting quarterbacks pretty much on your team because one, again, injuries and two, bye weeks. So quarterbacks go off the board. My team right now, Russell Wilson and Cam are my two quarterbacks. I have Melvin Gordon, Joe Mixon as my two running backs. I have Julio and Cortland Sutton or Julio and Julian Edelman as my wide receivers and Damian Williams and Julian Edelman or Damian Williams and Cortland Sutton as my flex and TJ Hawkinson as my tight end. And again, these teams come out very differently. Like don't look at this from the season long point of view. Um, because the draft goes crazy in that sense. Like, obviously, you know, Julian Edelman drops to the 11th round, and that's why I can grab him as my wide receiver, too, because he doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, value in Dynasty because he might retire after this year. But I grabbed Cortland Sutton, who I'm not that big of a fan of, 
but I think he needs probably another year to develop into that potential wide receiver one. So Julian Ellum is a perfect like gap wide receiver that's going to put me up great production this year while I kind of sit on Cortland Sutton. But my pick is up. And right now, basically my starting lineup is filled. So there's no position I'm targeting. Um, there's a couple of guys I do have on the board that I'm really looking at. And I probably need some wide receiver depth. And I really like Marvin Jones. I think he's a value in this at, at this point. But he'd be my third older wide receiver because I have Julio and Edelman. And if I take, if I take Marvin Jones, Alton Jeffrey's still on the board too, but he's, he's also 29 and he is, uh, let me see what his contract. If you ever want to look at uh, contracts, type the player's name in and spot track, spot track. Um, okay. So he's actually signed through 2021, but a lot of people are assuming that they kind of drafted JJ Arcega Whiteside as his heir apparent. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Alshon Jeffrey eventually got traded, to be honest. Because, I mean, they also bring in Deshaun Jackson, which hurts Jeffrey's ceiling this year, um, as well as floor. So there's a lot going on in Philadelphia. And they also bring in Miles Sanders, who's a pass catching back. So, like, it, it's hard to trust Alshon Jeffrey, and he will be 30 next year. So um, he's not a guy necessarily I'm looking to invest in because I don't think his, his 2019 outlook or his long-term outlook is really that appealing to me. So I like Marvin Jones. Uh, I like Latavius Murray as well as someone who can come in and give you production for this year. He signed that three or four year deal and they're not going to use him a lot. So I don't think he's really going to be that banged up. And he's a one, he's a great handcuff to Alvin Kamara because he'll take over the workhorse load if he, uh, if he, if Kamara gets hurt, which he hasn't really shown to be injury prone or anything. So I don't expect it to happen, but Latavius Murray is a lot younger than people probably realize. Oh, wow, never mind. He's a lot older than I realize. I thought, why did I think Latavius Murray was younger than 29 years old? Either way, I think he's going to produce great numbers in that New Orleans offense. I kind of talked about that earlier in the best ball. But I already have Mixon, Melvin Gordon, and um, Damian Williams. So I'm not really looking at instant production. The one guy I really, really, really probably need to draft right now is Austin Eckler. Um, Austin Eckler, because I have Melvin Gordon. And I'm not necessarily concerned about Melvin Gordon's injuries. Like, yeah, he has a history of them. Um, but I think he'll play 13, 14 games. If I'm lucky, he'll play 16. But Eckler also was a top 20. He's like the least talked about guy that played well last year. Um, and he's like someone you could put into your lineup if you're desperate as a flex play on his own, right? Um, so I don't know. Like Eckler for me, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a Gordon owner, so I'm going to reach a little bit higher. I, he'll probably go in the 12th or 13th round for most drafts. But I'm a, I'm a Gordon owner. Plus, I just like him a lot. I think he's super, super underutilized. And he's only 23 years old. I Actually, I believe while I'm filming this, he's literally going to turn 24 tomorrow. Super young. His contract ends at the end of this year. So it's very likely that he could end up in a, in a, in a situation where he's getting a big workload. Like he becomes the Alvin Kamara in a, in a different NFL offense um, after he's done in LA. So I like him for dynasty because he is so young. Plus he's my handcuff. So I'm probably going to have to go with Eckler here. Actually, I want to check out their quarterbacks to make sure I'm not missing on any big value because I don't have a third quarterback yet. And I'm going to need to probably grab one. Drew Brees is on the board. Uh, Dalton Flacco. So there's still a few starting quarterbacks. They're probably going to be gone by the time my next pick is up. Oh, no, I have two. So I have the 11-9 and the 12-4. So I'm up again in six picks. So I can probably get Eckler here and then a quarterback. See, what I like... Let me look at the draft board. Scott has one pick, but he already has like nine quarterbacks. Cody, you have like four picks before my next pick what's your quarterback situation looking like so you have two quarterbacks so i wouldn't be surprised if he went with a quarterback as well but dynasty wise like you know it's like do i want to take drew Brees here because he's someone who could obviously fill in if cam gets hurt or something for this year but he's probably going to retire after this year we'll see maybe he signs a one-year extension or something or would i rather go with you know his heir in Teddy Bridgewater and I could have him for the next five years or so in the New Orleans offense so Teddy Bridgewater is probably a much better pick in Dynasty but it depends how you set your team up right if you went really heavy on the skill players and you didn't have a quarterback two yet and you need someone who's going to produce this year that's why Dynasty is cool because it's all about roster construction Drew Brees is a great pick in the 12th 13th round right because he's going to be a quarterback one this year most likely um, but you, you don't really have to pay that price for him 
So Bridgewater would probably, I, I think I'm going to look at Bridgewater, you know, I'm going to do more research in between my next pick, but I'm going to go with uh, Austin Eckler here. As long as there's not any like really good young youth at wide receiver that I am not looking at um, hard enough. Skirt. I'm sorry, this is the last thing I'm going to do, so if you get, don't care at all about my Dynasty team, um, then the video is pretty much over for you. And I ask that you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this, if you found this valuable. We'll be doing mock drafts every Friday. Uh, we put out van fantasy videos every Tuesday and Thursday as well. Once June 1st hits, we are going five videos a week, possibly live streaming on Saturdays. So make sure you are subscribed down below. Make sure you got the bell notification, the little bell right underneath the video. Click that so you get notifications anytime I go uh, anytime I upload a video, anytime I go live, make sure you're following us at these other social channels that I'll link right here or that are, you know, the handles are right there. And then make sure you go check out bigdogsdraftguide.com. Go get that 20% off price prior to um, July 1st. Draft.com slash BDGE. Use our promo code, baby. I know I just told you to do like 50 things, but go do them all. That's why it's YouTube is a beautiful thing. You can go rewind and go listen to everything I just said again. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Austin Eckler, 11-9. Let's get it.